So we made this one monster. We're going to make a second monster, and we're going to make something that I call the monster on crack. We, I just want to really demonstrate that it's a different monster than this one. Uh, and we're going to look at how the, the palettes on the screen for monsters work. It should make a little bit more sense now that when we start playing in this step. Um, additionally, we're going to make it so you die when you run into them. Um, it, it's already sort of coded up, so it should happen by default. Uh, but I want to... Uh, we, there's one more thing that we need to do to make it work. Probably if you've tried it and tried to run into your monster, it, the game might have hung, it might have just froze, your guy might have just disappeared, you didn't know exactly what happened, it maybe it just turned into the corner piece of his head, and you don't know exactly what happened, and we're going to take a look at what's actually happening and make death work. Um, again, what is death? What is life? These are the questions. Let's make a new monster. There's, you know, we could make a monster, go to Monster Graphics Banks, Graphic Bank Zero. We could make a monster the same way. We, if we want to make a new monster, we click on Monsters. And we could go ahead and design a new monster. If we want to edit the bug monster, we click on Bug Monster. How can you tell if you're making a new monster or editing an existing one? If it says save, you're making a new one. If it doesn't say save, you're editing an existing one. Okay? So um, we could just make a new monster right, right from scratch. Or, rather than have to go through and design all the, uh, the animations again and set the animations and all that stuff, I could duplicate this. I can right-click and duplicate the monster. And now I've got a copy of my monster, and I'm going to name him Monster Fast. All right? And it's automatically saving this stuff. Um, so I'm editing Monster Fast, and the thing is, is I want a different looking monster, even though he's going to have the same animations, use the same tiles. I want him to be a different color. So he's, instead of using sub palette, the, the first sub palette for monsters, he's going to use the second sub palette for monsters. Um, I'm going to make a new sub palette. I'm not going to edit my player palette. I'm not going to start making changes to this. I'm going to edit a new palette, and I'm going to call it Yellow Bug Monster palette and this palette oops this palette is going to be the exact same as this palette here except the red is going to be yellow that mustard yellow and dark blue and white and already this tile is changing so what we're going to do is go through and update all of them to point to this second sub palette instead of the first one and this is going to take a few seconds um bear with me I could also just create from scratch and do it that way, but this is this will save me at least a little bit of time. Um, so I, I select the tile and then click on the second sub palette, change the frame. Um, now a lot of NES games did this. If you think back to like the legend, the original Legend of Zelda, they'd have you know the blue and red Octoroks, and they behave slightly differently. We're gonna do something similar here. We're gonna have the the red fire ant that moves very slow and lumbrous, and we're gonna have this yellow cracked out uh, fire ant um, that moves around very fast. So just make sure. And if I happen to miss, like if you wanted to make this guy blink two different colors, you could make frame one the first sub palette and frame two the second sub palette, that kind of thing. So th there's some really cool effects. So we're gonna actually do that with the boss. We're gonna do some cool stuff with the boss. Okay, so now I've changed his color. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change his details and I'm gonna change his, um, his speed. So I want him to be almost tw like three times as fast um, and everything else is going to be the same for this guy. In fact, I'm going to make his animation speed so fast that it looks like his feet are just going back and forth. like, it looks like a cartoon, like one of those old cartoons where the character's about to start running. And, um, rather than have this timer, I'm going to set the time, I'm going to, uh, rather than have it repeat at the end of the action. No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to set the timer for let's say two instead and this is a multiple of i think 32 so or 16 so it'll set the timer pretty short and so he's gonna like be buzzing around much faster than the the red bug all right so now i've got a second bug monster and as soon as i click off him he's gonna update there so his graphic update over here i need to put him in a group i can either edit my bugs group or if i click on monster groups the folder i can make a new one um, let's put one of each in there. I'm just going to put two objects in there, but I'm going to fill out all four, uh, in the group here. Uh, so I'm going to put, call this mixed bugs. I hit save. 
Now, important to remember, once again, I'm going to keep saying it, the color is not tied to the object. So technically, these look exactly the same as far as their pixel by pixel uh, representation. What's different is this one is going to be filtered through sub palette three. This one's going to be filtered through sub filtered through sub palette four. So depending on how I have those in the on the screen is going to determine what colors these show up as. So when I go to my screen and I go to screen info and I go to day monsters, I'm going to tell it I want it mixed bugs, but you can see it's showing this guy is going to look this color. I want him to show up as the yellow bug monster. Now my my red bug monster is going to show through this sub palette and my yellow bug monster is going to show through this sub palette. And we'll pull up the picture processing unit and see exactly what's happening there. I'm going to keep my cracked out monster out of the way. I'm going to put him over here and let's just test this out and check it out. So two monsters that behave differently on the screen now. Uh, oops, my uh, looks like my wireless controller might be out of juice here. Give me one second. Sorry, I'm plugging in my wired one. That's not as fun. There we go. And there we go. The cracked out monster running around like wild and changing his directions and yeah, ping ponging and looks like centipede almost, right? Um, <laughs> now he's stuck in the corner because he's reversing his direction. Hopefully, eventually he'd break out of that. Uh, but anyway, okay. So now we have two distinctly different monsters showing up on the screen at one time. I'm going to close this out. Um, and there are things that we could do that could avoid getting stuck like that. And, you know, there's all kinds of tricks that we can employ. Um, oh, I meant to show you what I wanted to show you was this. Um, let's take a look at the picture processing unit. So this is what I was talking about. These are our sprite palettes. So this is my player. This is that second uh, game object sub palette. Here is my first monster's color being loaded. Here is my second monster's color being loaded. So you can see if I had four different monsters on the screen that use different palettes, I, I wouldn't be able to represent them all. So it's the screen that controls the palettes, not the monsters. And, and now you can actually see what I'm talking about. This first monster used these colors. The second monster used these colors. Okay. So that means that when I'm creating him, this is just a reference. I'm just like, I'm saying, yeah, I think I'll want to use that color palette when I'll, I'll want to apply that to the screen. What's really important is that I said I want him to use the number two color palette. Um, all right. So now let's make it so you die. And we want to talk about what's actually happening. Um, I don't know what death means, you know, in this game, we have to figure out what I mean by death. And it's going to be really simple. I'm going to make it so when I run into one of these monsters, I'm going to poof and explode. And when the explosion's done, uh, the game's going to restart. Okay. Um, so what I need is graphics for a poof explosion. And I already have, if I look at my script for death right here, this is a system script, so generally I don't recommend at this point messing with this. But if I look at my death, it already does a whole bunch of things. Uh, and one of the things it does is it creates an object. It creates object 8, which is effect 0 right here. And it deactivates the player. So I can make that an explosion, or I can, I'll show you a couple different tricks that we can do. Um, now, what's nice about having player death in its own script is that when you inevitably get better at programming and we've exposed a lot of what this code does under the hood and you want to make something dramatically different happen when you die, you want to determine what that is, you can just change the code here and change completely how the player death's behavior works. For now, stick with me on this one. This is going to be the most sensible, easiest way uh, to handle it. So. Uh, I'm going to, this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's going to create this game object when I run into a monster. Um, so how can we make this into a death? Well, first of all, I'm going to make a graphic that uh, object that's the same size as my player. And I'm going to do a quick Zelda thing. You guys probably remember this if you're, uh, if you were a big Zelda fan, um, where he spins, but I'm going to make him spin obscenely fast, uh, and then explode flip horizontal. I'm also going to load uh, that game object palette down here. Um, and let's see, what would he look like? No, I'm just going to keep him that color. So I'm going to give him an eight full frame animation. 
Frame one is going to be him facing down. Frame two is going to be him Actually, I'm going to make this animation four frames. Watch this. Frame two is going to be him facing left. Frame three is going to have him facing up. Frame four is going to have him facing right. So let me just grab frame two, copy. Oops. Copy. Go to frame four. Paste. Flip. Okay. So now he's spinning. Um, and I'm going to call this, let's manage the animation, and I'm going to call this spin. And I'm also going to add explode. Oops. I'm going to rename this explode. There we go. Um, and so I'm going to go to explode and I'm going to use this graphic right here for explode. So I'm going to make this a full eight frames because I'm going to leave a couple frames at the end for just to, to wait. Um, and I'm going to flip this horizontally and I'm going to flip this vertically and I'm going to flip this horizontally and vertically there. So I've got the beginning of a little simple explosion. I'm going to go to my second frame and use this, do the same thing with this guy. Flip it vertically, flip it vertically and horizontally. I'm gonna go to frame three. Flip that horizontally, flip that vertically, flip this horizontally and vertically, and frame four, just some stray almost noise here vertically and last one vertically and horizontally um, and for the rest of the frames I'm just gonna have it show a blank sprite on all of them I'm gonna copy that frame paste 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 um, and uh, you know, I'll even uh, add, th this will be a way I can control some timing so that there's a little bit of uh, holdover after I've exploded. I'll, I'll even make one more animation just called uh, absent. Um, and with absent, I'm just going to make it uh, a couple of frames in size. And they're all just going to be blank. All right. And basically what I'm going to have happen is when this thing shows up on the screen, he's going to spin once. At the end of his animation, he's going to explode. At the end of that animation, it's going to go to absent. At the end of absent, it's going to restart the game. So I'm going to go to object details. Let's let's give this a name. Let's call this uh, player death. Now, this may or may not hold over. I think it will uh, hit save. Um, and if I go to object details, um, doesn't matter what direction, any direction I want him to do this, this exact same thing, but I do want to add, I do want to change the name of this to spin. I want to add explode and for explode, no matter which direction he's facing, I want him to do the explosion. And I'm also going to add uh, absent or blank or whatever you want to call it. And for that, I definitely want them showing the absent. And I could do this with timers and stuff like that too, but this is a really easy way that I could do it with just the stuff that we've already learned. Uh, with details, it doesn't. it's not worried about solid collision. It has no speed at all, none of this stuff. The only thing we need to worry about is this. So first of all, it's got a really pretty fast spin speed and we'll have to check out how fast that should be um and we're, he's going to loop at the end of the action this is we're not going to do anything there's no he's not going to move he's not going to have any action at the end of his animation though it's going to advance to the next action so in this 
Um, you know, we could do, we could even make him spin a little bit slower. So he spins twice. So this guy, he's going to spin just a little bit slower. So real fast spin, a little bit slower spin. And at the end of that spin, now he's going to change to explode. And that's going to be a super fast animation. And at the end of explode, he's going to advance one more time. And that's going to be that absent. That's going to be that little bit of hold. And I don't know what the right number is. I'm going to put it a little bit long. And then at the end of that animation, it restarts game. And I might want to use end action for that and, and make it, you know, a long hold. I don't know what's going to look best. Um, doesn't need a bounding box. It doesn't collide. We don't want it to collide with any objects at all. So now... Um, the engine that we have says that if I run into a monster, the collision detection says it's going to it's gonna run that death script, which gets rid of this player and puts this in its place. They look the same to start with, so it's going to be fairly seamless. And eventually we're going to add a sound effect too. And then at the end, it restarts the game after those animations are done. So we don't have to put this in the game. It's going to automatically do that because that's what our current engine does. And I'm going to check this out you'd usually probably want to have some kind of health system or whatever first we're just not going to get that deep uh into this so i'm going to run into this guy oh and he can see he's it's working but he's showing the wrong animation so let's figure out why he's showing the wrong animation hold on and it's looping it looks like so let's look at our player death what did i do wrong here um, spin. Well, first of all, spin is showing explode and spin should show spin. So I must have changed the wrong one. My fault. Spin should show spin. Explode. Yep. <laughs> spin should show spin. Explode should show explode. There we go. And make sure my details stayed. So when I uh, animation type spin, um, when the animation is done, it advances. Can, and then when this animation is done, it advances. And then when it explodes, it advances. And then absent when that's done, it restarts the game. So I made a couple of mistakes there, and I just fixed them. Um, so now if I run into the bad guy, boom, that's what I want to see, and then restart. Perfect. That gives me, you know, with the sound effect, this will really sell it. Boom. Awesome. I can make him spin a couple more times if I wanted to carry, if I wanted that to uh, carry out. Now, I believe my hurt tile type does the same thing at this point. Yep. So if I run into the hurt tile type, it does the exact same thing. So that's a quick look at how we can make uh, basic death uh, function. And a lot of this is already built into the engine, uh, like in our collision detection script right now. Um, if I look at the game engine, routines, systems, again, I don't recommend changing this. Future versions will have things like uh, health and, and live, lives and things like that. For right now, um, if I look at handle object collisions, this is what happens if there's a collision. Uh, there is a collision do handle collision loop. And if there is a collision with a non-player object, it does the handle player death script. And that was this. So we've got it by default. If we like if you wanted to start adding a health system or life system, it would go here. And only if health was down to zero would it do handle player death script. And if you want to change what death meant, you would change this part. So just showing you some just trying to get your brain thinking uh, out of the box and stop thinking about things like, well, I want it to when I hit the guy, I die. Well, OK, what does that mean? We just defined what that means here. So in order to, for you to make a compelling game, you would have to think about what that means for you and how you could achieve it with the systems that we have in place. All right, next up, we're going to make a boss.